three of those men, uh, Oriel Junqueras, uh, the Vice President of Catalonia uh, and its Minister of Finance, Jordi Quickchart, a respected civil society leader, and Jordi Sanchez, a member of the Catalan Parliament and President of the Catalan National Assembly. Each of them has been imprisoned since autumn uh, of last year, uh, in October and November, uh, and their detention and continued imprisonment is an affront to human rights designed to prevent them from performing their role as political representatives of the Catalan people. Today, uh, we have lodged on their behalf an application to the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention. Their imprisonment by Spain clearly falls foul of international law, and we ask the UN to make that declaration and then to use all of the resources at its disposal to secure the release uh, of these men. Uh, in particular, uh, our application sets out uh, that the imprisonment of Mr. Junqueras, Mr. Quichart, and Mr. Sanchez violates their rights to freedom of association and freedom of expression, their rights to political opinion and participation in public life, and discriminates against them because of their advocacy for the rights of the Catalan people to self-determination. The proceedings against them have also failed in a number of respects to meet uh, international fair trial standards. Uh, and as uh, those familiar with the situation will know, uh, over a hundred uh, academic Spanish legal experts have gone on record as confirming that the charges brought against them are unsustainable in the light of what has happened uh, since there was no element of violence against, uh, the, in the allegations against them. The charges are uh, purely political uh, and in short, it, this is a classic case of arbitrary political detention. I want to emphasize that this case does not, and I repeat not, ask the United Nations to adjudicate on the issue of Catalan independence. Rather, it seeks the UN's reaffirmation that governments cannot repress political dissent through arbitrary detention uh, of opponents. Spain must release uh, these men. The actions of the Spanish government set a dangerous precedent for the right to peaceful protest and political opposition around the world. Uh, and we ask, therefore, for the UN to strongly reiterate that governments cannot use empty criminal charges to quell uh, political opposition. I'll now um, ask my colleague Rachel Landon to say a few words. I'll say a few words in Spanish just to, to get the situation to, in Barcelona clear. Uh, España ha encarcelado a nuestros clientes, a los tres que defendemos hoy, para impedir que ejercen alguna actividad política, que siempre han ejercido antes de manera pacífica. Señor Sánchez y Junqueras han sido elegidos como diputados y no pueden escoger sus puestos. Las autoridades españolas usan de modos dictatoriales encarcelando a oponentes políticos y negando su liberación para que abandonen sus convicciones y sus funciones políticas, lo que constituye y lo que hemos podido analizar como de verdad una inadmisible violación de sus derechos fundamentales. Uh, uh, thank you very much. We'll take some questions if there are any either uh, uh, from uh, the Spanish link or from those in the room. Could you please identify yourself? Uh, 
so the process uh, um, within the working group is a flexible one in terms of timing uh, and obviously the more urgent pressing uh, and politically significant a case is the greater is the expedition with which it's likely to be dealt with we are optimistic that the working group will take steps swiftly to refer the application to the Spanish government for its response uh, and will having taken uh, uh, comments on all sides come to a decision as quickly uh, as possible uh, as far as the implications of the decision are concerned it begins with the declaration from the working group uh, that the detentions are arbitrary political detentions and I just pause at that point and say imagine for a moment that the United Kingdom imprisoned the leaders of the Scottish National Party for advocating the independence of Scotland that is the situation that we are here confronted with uh, and uh, we are optimistic therefore uh, that there will be a favourable decision from the working group. That becomes the start of a process rather than its end uh, and we uh, expect the United Nations then to take uh, all appropriate measures to put pressure on Spain to ensure that these individuals are not detained for their political advocacy uh, of a non-violent kind uh, and we would we hope that the Spanish authorities, including its courts, will pay due respect to the decision of the working group when it comes. It's not, as I think probably uh, many of you are aware, a binding decision in the legal system of Spain, but it's an important step to bring Spain before uh, the bar at the international community level in order to get a declaration which makes clear that this type of political oppression uh, is something uh, which belongs to a long bygone era of Spanish history. Uh, how long will it take to, to have uh, an answer, an answer from the working group? It, uh, it, it, it's, it's going to depend on the urgency with which the working group decides to pursue the matter and the speed with which the Spanish authorities respond. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be this week, um, but we are hopeful uh, that it's not a process that is likely to drag on for many months. For many years, Spain was considered a model of democracy, of transition between the, from dictature to, to democracy. Uh, but the behavior of the police and the Spanish judges and government has posed some serious questions. What does it say, in your opinion, about the state of the Spanish democracy and the independence of its judicial system, and how has it affected the image of Spain in the legal community? I can answer that question very shortly. It is a cornerstone of political democracy as it is understood in the international community in modern times, that there should be scope for plurality of political opinion uh, and opportunities for the advocacy of political change, even if it's unpopular, even if it's unpopular with the majority government, even if it doesn't command the majority opinion of the people, although, as we know, uh, that is uh, uh, not the position here. Um, to use the machinery of the state uh, so as coercively to force people into jail uh, and only to release them or to abandon criminal proceedings against them if they abdicate their political beliefs has a chilling effect on the plurality of democracy. It has a chilling effect uh, on the ability of democracy to function properly and as I say it belongs to a bygone era in Spain's history that many of us thought was long uh, uh, left behind. Okay, let me see if there, is any, if there is any question in Barcelona, okay? I have to check one moment the volume. Okay, uh, so, so, sorry for... Okay, so now, uh, on a noise desde Barcelona, si tenéis alguna pregunta. <coughs> Hola, buen día. Julio Soler, del señor Puntoes. La primera pregunta es exactamente la admisión a, a Trami. ¿Es automática o cuál estudia el comité de la, de la ONU? Y si el este 
comitè anar a algun tipus de documentació i la porteu vosaltres o la ha demanat el govern espanyol o el Tribunal Suprem? Ok, en anglès, la pregunta és si aquest grup de treball ha d'acceptar automàticament aquesta aplicació o si han de considerar si han de considerar l'aplicació. I, en segon lloc, els documents són els que us presenteu o han de demanar els documents de diferents partits? Um, uh, the, the, the short answer, of course, is that like any judicial tribunal, uh, the working group needs to decide whether there is sufficient evidence and sufficient material here to raise a case suggesting that Spain has acted uh, in an arbitrary fashion in uh, affecting these detentions. We are strongly optimistic that they will come to the conclusion that there is, uh, and that the next step will be to refer the application to the Spanish government for its answer. Uh, uh, documents, of course, uh, have been filed, a substantial quantity of them, with the application, uh, and further documentation, no doubt, will be required. But you really don't need a vast amount of documentation to see the point that lies at the heart of this application which is that if you go around imprisoning those who advocate for political change, you are undermining the foundations of democracy. Uh, and fortunately, we have the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention as a long stop protection to ensure that states don't misuse the machinery of state power uh, in order to force political opponents uh, 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 to abandon uh, their, their cause. Uh, for, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 because they are at risk of being imprisoned uh, for exercising the rights to freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Molt bé, si ho tinc ben entès, aquest organisme ha fixat posició sobre la vulneració de drets humans a països com Veneçuela, Ruanda o l'Iran. Espanya està en aquest grup de països, doncs? As I understand, this working group has presented cases in countries like Venezuela, Ruanda and Iran. Does that mean that Spain now finds itself in this sort of company? Well, it, it, the working group has dealt with cases uh, against a wide variety of states, including the United Kingdom. Um, uh, and certainly, if the ap application is successful, uh, it is a serious blight on Spain's claim to democracy. Uh, uh, and we are confident that this application reflects that. That, that Spain is allowing a backslide from genuine commitment to democratic principles. No sé si ens podria dir que ja vostè porta la causa de la persona del recurs per Junqueras, Sánchez i Cuixart, també hi ha Joaquim Forn, exconseller d'Interior a la presó, si ell no sap és la seva una decisió personal, i segon, si normalment quant de temps porta des que es presenta el recurs, es pronuncia el grup de treball, i si el govern dona tota la informació. Okay, two questions. Firstly, that in this case you're representing three of the imprisoned men. You're not representing Joaquim Bor, and is that because of his personal preferences, or, or what are the reasons for that? And secondly, if you can explain more about the time scale, that from when you present the case to how long do we expect it before before we have some sort of decision? Um, the case of Mr. Fawn illustrates uh, many of the problems that we have uh, just outlined. Uh, it is an incredibly difficult decision for any individual who has been locked up in jail for their political beliefs, what steps they wish to take uh, in relation to uh, securing their release. Uh, 
Uh, it's been widely reported that Mr. Fawn has uh, uh, made statements abandoning his political position uh, and abandoning his uh, position uh, as a deputy in the new parliament. Um, the uh, uh, chilling effect of detention is being played out uh, it, it, as we speak. Uh, and so, um, uh, of course, it is in the end a personal decision for him uh, where he draws the line, but the three clients that we represent remain uh, committed to their cause, above all, to the cause of free speech. As far as timing is concerned, I, I, I've been pressed a number of times on this and I've said the same thing, which is the timing will depend very much on the priorities of the working group. But if you want me to translate that, it, 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 it translates into weeks or months rather than years. I know, I know. Yes, I, I, I mean, that's an entirely legitimate question. Uh, and w as with any major piece of international litigation, there is more to uh, the strategy that's being pursued on behalf of the Catalan political leadership in the international sphere than just this application. This is the first salvo, uh, and there will be further steps to come, of course, in due course, uh, when proceedings have concluded in Spain, there is recourse to the European Court of Human Rights, which is binding uh, on the Spanish authorities. But we're very much hoping uh, that a clear statement from the United Nations, backed not only by the working group, but by other aspects of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights and the Special Procedures of the United Nations, will bring to bear sufficient political pressure upon Spain and indeed that its judicial authorities will take account of what is a judicial decision by the working group uh, in order to exercise the powers that are absolutely available to them to release these men and allow them to continue with their political activities peaceful as they are. And I emphasize these are non-violent political activities of a kind that would be tolerated in any modern democracy apart, it seems, from Spain. And, and that the, 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 the charges they face are typified in the law of a, of a European democracy uh, legal system. And the second question will be, do you think it's accurate to say Catalonia takes Spain to the United Nations, to the United Nations as you say in the, in the press release? Um, let me take the second question first. That's a short form. It's obviously three individuals who are taking their case to the United Nations, but they are three highly significant individuals for the Catalonian independence movement, including uh, the vice president. But not Catalonia. Well, Catalonia obviously doesn't at current time have standing to bring one state to well, it's not it's not, it's not recognised as a state, but, uh, but they are. It's the Catalonian cause and the suppression of the Catalonian cause by the actions of the Spanish authorities, which is being brought uh, before the working group. Can I ask my colleague just to take the first question, um, which I, I, I wasn't sure I can, you, you perhaps you'd like to repeat it in yeah, Spanish. Uh, I, I, the question was if you are aware that these political ideas that, that your three clients defend are being defended and have been defended in Spain many years peacefully and with no, yeah. with no yeah. consequence. And uh, yeah, are, are you aware that, that the charges they face are not are typified in a, in a democratic mm -hmm. legal system? Uh, your, your questions, in fact, are, well, both sides are very linked. Because, in fact, for years, effectively, there's been a cause to get the independence. For years, there have been some complaints against them, in fact. 
in front of the jurisdiction of Catalonia, Tribunal Supremo of Barcelona, because it's the competent jurisdiction for these events. And never for years, the courts of Catalonia accepted the crimes of sedition and rebellion that now are the cause of their imprisonment. Because they were saying, as we say, and I, because it's still true, that these crimes cannot be constituted because they both need violence and there has not been any violence forever in this movement. You can criticize it, but there, has, there is no violence. And the, qualification, the qualifications of rebellion and sedition, and you've got law professors, you've got even judges of the Tribunal Supremo who all said that without violence, these crimes cannot be constituted. And why they have qualified these events suddenly with these qualifications, because these are the only crimes who could put them in jail. If it was just disobedience, they could not be in jail. And I suppose I would add to that, it's just not true to say the crimes of rebellion and sedition, as they have been applied in this case, find echoes in other European democracies. Because... No, I didn't say that. Pardon? I didn't say that in another, but they are in a, in a legal system. Of they law. exist. They exist, but not as they have been applied to non-violent protests. Indeed, the opposite is true. The European Convention on Human Rights guarantees the rights to freedom of expression and political participation, which these imprisonment decisions ride roughshod over. So it's, it's simply not true to say that Spain can find itself in common company with other European democracies. This could not happen in other countries, and if it did, it would be as illegal internationally as it is in Spain. So you want to say that the Spanish judicial system is, um, uh, is acting unlawfully oh, no, in international it's, law? It's, uh, uh, it respects the democracy as any other uh, European country would do. On, in this respect, clearly not. It is riding roughshod over a fundamental democratic principle. Obviously, he has an entirely separate legal team acting on his behalf. Uh, and uh, the circumstances uh, uh, of his present position in Belgium are, are fairly well known, um, as are the, uh, or as is the response of Spain to abandon uh, its initial arrest warrant um, uh, for him for uh, technical reasons which apparently were unforeseen when the application was originally made. But we're not acting for him at this point in time. Uh, uh, and uh, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to comment confirming or denying any aspect of his position um, until we know exactly what he, the next step in the process as far as he is concerned uh, uh, is. But uh, those who are in Spain, I mean, we, what, what we do know is he removed himself from the Spanish jurisdiction. Those who stayed behind uh, are now behind bars. And so um, it's those uh, individuals on whom this application concentrates. Uh, you, yeah, I'm standing up. Um, uh, I was just emanating from the words of CPO, and Grace Shelley as well. Would you be able to say in Spanish for our Spanish clients what you expect the next step? I know it's not mm, mm. language, but if you wouldn't mind just saying in Spanish whatever. On the, the steps step of this communication. Okay. okay. Eh, hemos hecho la aplicación al grupo de trabajo para que estudie lo que hemos constatado de violaciones de los derechos de los tres encarcelados. Esta aplicación va a tardar semanas o meses y lo que esperamos es que, y somos optimistas, el grupo de trabajo realice que hay violaciones de los derechos de, de manifestación, de los derechos para tener un juicio eh, que sea legítimo y respetable y esperamos que en algunos meses pueda constatar que España ha violado esos derechos fundamentales. Las decisiones del grupo de trabajo no son un, una obligación, es si España quiere someterse a su decisión, que sería un símbolo importante para nos, nuestros clientes, ya que estamos muy optimistas y lo hemos realizado, que estas 
estos encarcelamientos de estas personas son de verdad violaciones de sus derechos fundamentales. Yes, well, well for the, the answer to your first question um, is a qualified no. Um, there's, there is n nothing in the allegations that have been made uh, against the three individuals who are in custody which meets the requirements uh, of the offences that they have been charged with because of the absence of violence in their conduct. Would there be other Spanish provisions uh, applicable? The answer to that question is that the majority of Spanish criminal lawyers have taken the view that there is potentially other uh, uh, scope for other charges, but not imprisonable ones. In other words, the key point is that you cannot use prison, even under Spanish law and the Constitution, as the basis for suppressing non-violent political speech. I mean, it is a universal principle. It is surprising that we're having to even debate this because it has been one recognized in relation to democracies and dictatorships all over the world for decades. And yet, and yet Spain is doing the very thing uh, which, which uh, is an affront to the right to organize, the right to expression, uh, and the right to uh, um, a, a, a legitimate non-violent political movements. Uh, it's all, I mean, that is the axiom question. I mean, a democracy tolerates non-violent dissent and non-violent opposition. The, the, the suppression of non-violent political speech is simply inconsistent with international law. As far as the, the, the arrangements are concerned, um, obviously uh, we, we were approached as, as a legal team, an international legal team, by uh, a coalition of those who were involved, the individuals themselves and the organisations, and that is the way in which the legal arrangements are made. So we're acting together, the clients are acting jointly, and with, of course, the support uh, of the Catalan community and the organizations, the non-governmental organizations that you mentioned. Martin Benedict, Associated Press Television. A uh, question in Spanish, if I could, please. Could you explain to Spanish viewers what is the value of this initiative if it's not binding? In Spanish. Please. Okay. Por ahora, no tenemos este asunto. Ha sido solo analizado por las cortes españolas. Y hasta que no se terminen todos los remedios nacionales, no podemos ir a la Corte Europea. Entonces, ¿qué queda a esas personas encarceladas que piden que estén metidas en libertad muchísimas veces y siempre le contestan pues no, porque todavía creéis en lo que es, lo que quieren, el combate que tienen desde hace años? Y lo niegan. Entonces, ¿qué queda? Pues queda... Este grupo de trabajo, que no es eh, binding en inglés, como decía, o sea, que no es obligatorio, claro, pero sería un mensaje fuerte y es por ahora lo que queremos ya, porque estas personas no tienen tantos remedios y todas las puertas en las jurisdicciones españolas están cerradas. Why not the European Protection Human Rights? 
Go ahead. No, please. Uh, the, the short answer to that is a technical one. Sorry. The, the short answer to that is a technical one. Uh, the European Court of Human Rights only has jurisdiction to consider applications against Spain, or, or indeed any other member state, when all domestic remedies have been exhausted. And so for any of the actions that have been taken uh, against the, Catal the, the Catalan political movement or individuals within it, all remedies need to be exhausted within the Spanish legal system before an application can be launched to the European Court of Human Rights. The Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, uh, by its nature, is concerned with people who are locked up now and therefore is able to act without exhaustion of all domestic remedies. And so, uh, that, as I said to you earlier, this is the first salvo in what will be a significant, sustained and wide-ranging international legal campaign. Uh, until the injustices have been resolved to the satisfaction uh, of those who have been in jail. So, okay. Sorry. Sorry, last question. Regarding the first uh, part of your speech, uh, you say that uh, it says a question, because I don't know if I understand uh, clearly. So, um, do you compare uh, this case Can you see a difference? Yes, basically, um, the Spanish uh, authorities uh, didn't agree with the Catalan authorities this referendum. Well, the then just change the time scale. Look at before the referendum in Scotland. Look at the movement in Scotland for a referendum. The referendum in Scotland didn't come from nowhere. It came from a grassroots political movement led by the Scottish National Party. They lost. But that's irrelevant. If, if the United Kingdom was to act as Spain has acted, it would have taken the leadership of the Scottish National Party and put them in jail months before the referendum had ever occurred. It's the same principle. There's no difference. May I add that maybe you must know that the call to endorse a referendum ceased to be a crime in Spain since 2005. The call to endorse a referendum. That's important too because we're talking about three people in jail and you ask, I think, maybe your colleague before, uh, did they break the constitution? We are not here to us qualify what they did, but we are just analyzing what Span Spain uh, criticized and puts them as a crime and it does not fit with the qualification, what they did concretely. And again, to call to endorse a referendum is not a crime in Spain anymore. Okay, I have uh, some extra questions from Barcelona. Okay. Anna, uh, Gemma, ¿teniu alguna pregunta desde Barcelona? Sí. Molt bé, endavant. Sí, una, una pregu dos preguntas. Quería saber si tienen previsto reunirse con sus clientes en prisión, con Junqueras, Sánchez y Cuixar, o si lo han hecho ya, o, o, o van a ir a la cárcel a verles. Y segunda, no me ha quedado claro ¿Cómo se pone en contacto con ustedes? ¿Si por algún colectivo de juristas catalanes, si por a través de la NC o de Unión Cultural, o si se había interesado antes por el caso ya? So, two questions. The first question is, is if you foresee having a meeting with your three clients in prison, or if you've even already met them. And the second question is, she's still not clear about how this case uh, arrived to you. Um, uh, about how they got in contact with you through a group of organizations or, or whatever. Um, so I'm going to difficult to follow everything here from Barcelona. Um, the, the, the answer to the first question is we have not yet, the, the three of us have not yet visited the clients in jail, but they are visited by the Spanish lawyers who are also named on the application as having as being a party to the legal team. So this is a mixed legal team, which is international and Spanish. Uh, however, we, are, we understand that we have the right to visit them and we will be doing so. 
Uh, as far as the arrangements are concerned, I'm not sure how much more information uh, it's possible for me to give you. I mean, we were approached as a, an international legal team in order to provide uh, legal representation at an international level uh, and look at all of the options that are available. I've mentioned we've discussed the working group, uh, we've discussed the European Court of Human Rights. Uh, it, I think when the uh, leadership of the Catalan movement reached the point where it was becoming clear that Spain can't put its own house in order in accordance with democratic principles, uh, they came to the conclusion that it was necessary to turn to the international community and appeal for support uh, in favour of their right to democratic, peaceful political expression. And th that therefore we were approached as lawyers who act in that field. Following this game of comparison with Scotland, mm -hmm. uh, if the things that happened in October 1st in Spain with the uh, actions of the police and then the imprisonment of the Catalan leaders had happened here in the Scottish election, the Spain and the following then, definitely there would have been a massive social and political reaction that would have brought the Prime Minister down. Don't you think so? It's hard to speculate. I simply don't think that this country or any other modern European democracy imprisons people purely for their beliefs. And so uh, speculating as to uh, how uh, it might have played out here is probably a, a pointless exercise. At the end of the day, imprisoning people for their beliefs, for their political beliefs, uh, peacefully expressed, is uh, uh, is contrary to Spain's international commitments, and it's as simple as that. Oh yes, I'm sorry. I should add, if any of you wish to have a copy of the actual application itself, they are available uh, as you leave um, uh, at the door. Okay.